A 15 gram mushroom trip report, posted by MCFOT to the Psychonauts subreddit three years ago. I'm always interested in other people's psychedelic experiences, so I thought maybe others were curious about mine. Since I'm trying to recall everything I can and be as detailed as possible, this may wind up being very long. So, I'm sorry in advance, or you're welcome I guess. A little background on me. I first tried mushrooms back in the summer of 2018, and up until that point I hadn't experimented with any drugs other than alcohol and weed. I was curious to try shrooms because, as I read up on it, I noticed many people describing the trips as one of the most important experiences of their lives. This really intrigued me, as I equated that to finding your true purpose in life. I was a little nervous for my first experience, as I didn't really know what to expect. So to ease into it, a good friend of mine and I did about 2.5 grams. It wasn't what I was expecting, as I didn't hallucinate or notice anything out of the ordinary, but I still ended up having a great time. It felt like taking a strong edible, or smoking a lot of weed and getting the giggles, like you would the first time you smoked, but minus the munches, which was a huge plus for me. A few months later I gave them another try. I was determined to have one of the most profound experiences I could have. I was specifically interested in directly challenging one's ego, so I decided to try about 5 grams all at once, as I read that this would get me to that next level. But again, I didn't really notice any significant difference. This time, I did see some vibrant colours and felt incredibly joyful for all of it, so it was another great experience, but just not what I was quite looking for. The same friend who did them with me previously did the 5 grams as well. He got super high and at times very uncomfortable. At one point, he even paced around in my kitchen for an hour while we chatted. He said it was the only thing that kept him calm. I'm sure he must have walked over two miles that night. So, I'm certain the shrooms were legit. I figured I'd just try more next time. So after another few months, I decided to really up the dose, to 15 grams. Would 7, 9 or even 10 suffice? Probably, but I wanted to make sure I got there this time. Was it stupid? 100%. But I had no idea what I would be in for, so I just went for it. And thus, I made some shroom tea. I drank it and sat on my couch. Contrary to popular advice, I was by myself this time. I figured that if I got really drunk or really high, I'd prefer to be left alone rather than having to inconvenience someone to take care of me. So if I have a bad trip, I'd rather be left alone as well. I know, it's stupid. As I was sitting on my couch, Within 20 minutes I could see some intense visuals starting to show up. I was blown away since this was my first time experiencing something like that. Something that is so unbelievable, yet so lucid at the same time. It truly was the closest I have ever felt to being a little kid since actually being one. I was so happy, and I was laughing uncontrollably. It didn't make any sense, but I really didn't care. It didn't have to. Then I remembered. I'd gotten back from the gym before I drank the tea, so I summoned enough sober brain power to jump in the shower before it really kicks in. I walked upstairs into my room, and like a typical person high on shrooms, by the time I'd gotten into my room I had no idea how much time had actually passed. My phone was downstairs, so I just went ahead and hopped in the shower. I closed my eyes, and I started to see a vast array of Aztec patterns. They were different shapes and sizes colourful and for some reason even hilarious. I opened my eyes so I could sit down. There was a built-in kind of seat in my shower. Weird, I know. Even though I was high as fuck, I was still very aware that I was in my shower, etc. So to help me get to that next level, I decided to turn off the lights, as well as the bathroom fan and the water in the shower. I figured if I cut out all the distractions, even for a minute, it might help. I know. Another great idea of mine. So there I was, chilling in a pitch black, silent shower like any normal human being does. I proceeded to rest my head in my hands so I could be somewhat comfortable, close my eyes, and try to find those Aztec shapes again. I was able to find them almost immediately, and this time they were far more vibrant in far greater numbers. As the patterns got more and more intense, I lost all feeling in my body, and I felt as if I was just floating. The shapes disappeared, and I thought maybe I was back in my shower again, but I still couldn't feel my body and it was really dark. I had lost all ties to reality, 
I felt like I was in a dream. So I treated the situation as if I was in a very lucid one. I was floating around and everything around me looked as if I was in a dark cave. I then went on to see these giant gargoyles just minding their own business in front of me. For whatever reason, I didn't feel afraid. I was just like, wow, 20 foot gargoyles. And they didn't seem to notice me, so I did feel quite safe. This bad trip isn't even that bad, I feel she thought to myself. Next thing I know, I straight up can't breathe. I had a close to drowning experience when I was about seven that I seem to have forgotten about until now. And at this point, the experience in my trip felt equally as shitty, and if not more terrifying than that memory as a child. I was still convinced I was in a dream. So I calmed myself down thinking, Hey man, you just have to wait this out and you'll wake up eventually. The feeling of drowning became stronger and stronger. I tried my best to snap out of it, and eventually came to the realisation that oh fuck, this isn't a dream at all. Maybe I just fell over in the shower and I'm literally drowning in my own shower like an idiot. But I was certain I'd turn the shower off. Well, maybe I just fell over in a really weird position then. Even with impending doom, my high brain was trying to find a way to be able to convince myself that everything would be okay, and to remain calm even if it's just for a few more seconds. But then I began to feel this incredible pain in my rib cage, as if every rib was breaking from the force of my intercostal muscles, flexing so hard due to the fact that my body is desperate for oxygen. I started to feel an overwhelming amount of fear, panic and pain all at once. I was trying my best not to freak out, but I knew I had about five seconds of remaining calm left in me, and there was nothing I could do about it. After a few more minutes of this great experience, I came to the terms that I am in fact about to die in my shower. But at this point, I don't care, I just really wanted this experience to end. I began to see a small white light and thought, really? The stereotypical type is true? Everything went pitch black and I saw this pinprick of white light, I felt incredibly calm. I then felt like I experienced another stereotypical phenomenon of seeing my life flash before my eyes. I could feel my entire life all at once. The best way I can put it into words is that it was like watching a highlight reel of my entire life. Except though, it was like simultaneously looking at thousands and thousands of TVs, hearing them all at once, and having the ability to take it all in as well. I felt this inexplainable surge of emotions wash over me. Some things I was able to focus on were some childhood memories that I had never recalled since that time in my life. They weren't anything significant, it would just be me walking in our backyard or something simple like that. I started to think, well, maybe I didn't die, and that I've just become insane instead. I again began to see only the white light, and it was getting bigger and bigger, until all I could see was a bright light that encompassed everything. Then, it disappeared and I saw pure darkness again. I had one last thought of, damn it, I can't believe I died in my shower. But I realised that it's too late for it to even matter, so who cares? I guess I'm just dead. I actually felt totally fine with this, and began to wonder how long I would be stuck in this void. What even am I? Am I a soul? I had so many questions with no source of answers whatsoever. However, I did feel that everything is going to be totally fine. I felt calm. I felt like I'd been here before. But the void wasn't 100% foreign to me. So I continued to float around, contemplating thoughts what felt like years. I had no idea what day, month or year it even was, and I felt like I was in this solitary state for decades. The entire concept of who I am, or was, was long gone. To me, it felt like I died so many years ago. It was enough time that I had actually moved on. I accepted my current reality of being this particle of energy, or whatever I was that was floating in this void. I felt like I was waiting here for my next life, but I wasn't sure if I would be a person, or if I would even be on the same planet, or if I would just be floating around for another 9,789 years. The longer I spent floating around though, the more I felt like I was in a familiar place. Then, I heard breathing. It got louder and louder, and I felt a glimmer of hope. 
Am I coming back to life? I still couldn't feel anything, but I could hear breathing, and I could somehow control it. This made no sense to me, but I just kept on breathing instead. I began to feel my right foot reforming, bone by bone. The sensation felt similar to that feeling of cracking your knuckles, an oddly satisfying relief. I could feel each part of my foot come back. It was so strange, but I didn't care. Next, I felt my right leg coming in. My breathing was getting louder and louder. Trying to maintain my breathing felt like it required the same amount of focus as when you're in a dream, and you're trying to stay calm so you don't wake up. As I felt my leg forming, I heard a voice that asked me, Why are you here? I hadn't heard a voice for years, so it caught me off guard and I didn't respond. I just felt overcome with frustration, as I couldn't even think of an answer. The voice asked again, Why are you here? I'm not sure, I said, and as I said that, I felt my body collapse, and once again, I had died. This time, I was able to wake up from the void a lot faster. I found myself sitting back in my shower, but everything was distorted. I knew I was definitely still high, but I could at least recognise where I was, so I was thrilled. Then, I started hearing voices. I couldn't distinguish what they were saying, but they continued on and I started to hear more and more. They were loud whispers, and then they got louder and louder, until it felt like headphones on maximum volume plus five. I couldn't figure out where it was coming from, and it freaked me out bad. I may not have died, I thought to myself, but I have fucked my brain up in some way. The voices continued for what felt like an eternity, until I yelled, just shut up, please! And to my surprise, they did. Finally enjoyed some peace and tranquility after this. I listened to my own breathing, being so grateful that it's all over. Well, this lasted for about 30 seconds, and once again, everything went pitch black, and I was back in the void. Guess I died again. I didn't care though. Anything was better than the voices. So I welcomed this familiar form of just being a floating energy particle again. Since I had a moment where I could think rationally for a second, I desperately tried to piece together any information I could to bring me back to some kind of reality, to get myself out of the trip. How long ago did I take the mushrooms? How long have I been high? How long ago did it feel like I drowned? Were the gargoyles a dream I had a week ago? I mean, what about the voices? The more I tried to find a way back to reality, the further I was drifting into the void. I then entered a repeated cycle of events that were as follows. Number one, I saw my entire life again, but sped up until the point where I took a large dose of mushrooms. It would take what felt like a few minutes to get to this point, but each time I got there, I could process and feel every experience I've ever had up until that very point. So strange. Once it got to the point of me weighing the mushrooms, the highlight reel would slow down to real lifetime for just a few minutes. The second occurrence was that after I drink the tea, Thankfully it would speed up again, and i feel my body reforming. Number three, I would hear a voice ask me, why am I here? And I would always reply with, I don't know. And finally four, I would then die, and steps one to three would repeat. Each time that the cycle restarted, I would take a larger and larger dose of mushrooms. 20 grams, then 30, then 40, all the way up to 100, and so on. Every time I was reforming, I would regenerate more and more of my body each time. The reforming part was also in real time. The why are you here part was also in real time as well. And each time I was asked the question, I got a little bit closer to knowing the answer. As the cycles continued on, I could feel it on the tip of my tongue. I was so close. I felt like I knew it for a second, but just forgot briefly. I was so frustrated. How could I let something slip out of my mind like that? I tried as hard as I could to remember, and angrily yelled out, I don't know, and prepared to die for the 300 quintillionth time. I paused for a moment in the void and thought, okay, I definitely died, and now I'm in hell. 
It wasn't fear I felt at this point anymore, but the sheer frustration of getting so close to finding the answer each time and coming up short each instance. I'd been tripping for what felt like decades or centuries. I thought for sure I'm dead now, I'm in hell and I'm never going to get out of this cycle. Then, as I was reforming for the 311th quintillionth time, I got to the point where I could feel my entire body. I was so excited, but I had to remain calm because I didn't want to wake up, or in this case, die. Then, I saw nothing, but a pinprick show up in the black void. That damn little stereotypical light. I didn't think I'd be so happy to see it. It had been centuries. I could hear my breathing getting louder and louder, and with each breath, the light got bigger and bigger. I started to hear voices again, but this time, they were cheering me on and yelling at me. Keep breathing, keep breathing. I felt like I was running a race. Breathing was so exhausting. Just when I thought I had nothing left in the tank, I heard that son of a bitch again. Why are you here? This time though, it was getting drowned out by the sound of the people yelling and my own breathing. I ignored it and focused on the feeling of my body. I focused on my arms and hands. I opened and closed my fists. I could feel every bone in my hand crack like Bruce Lee getting ready to lay the smack down. Then, I focused all my energy on trying to find a handle in my shower so I could pull myself up. I felt it. I did everything I could to pull myself up. As I stood, I couldn't feel one of my legs and got worried. It's probably just asleep from sitting down for so long. I'll give it a minute. So I waited around a bit and felt my leg reform all at once. I slid open the glass door and slowly walked out. I opened the bathroom door to my room and felt a windstorm like a cool gust blowing my face. It was the most refreshing feeling I had ever felt in my life. I was still heavily breathing and it was pitch black in my room too. I turned on my bedroom light and everything appeared to be normal. I walked back to the bathroom and turned on the light. Everything was normal. I looked at myself in the mirror and I appeared to be normal as well. Pupils still mid-dilated. Was it over? Was it finally over? I saw my reflection in the mirror and it was me still, but at age 8, then 80, and then back to my current age. I took a few deep breaths. I was back to normal. I left the lights on and took a shower. Afterwards, things were still back to normal, and all signs pointed to me being out of the trip and sobering up. I walked downstairs and all I could think about was how long was I out for? Had it been a day? A week? Were people trying to get hold of me? I was anxious to check my phone. I took a look and turns out what felt like hundreds of lifetimes was in reality only about 4.5 hours. I breathed a deep sigh of relief. I smoked a joint and relaxed for the rest of the evening. It was officially over. Well, if you made it this far, thank you. I appreciate you taking all of the time. Take care, everyone. That was a wonderfully in-depth macrodose of mushrooms. The 15 gram ones really do seem to be the most mind-blowing in a sense, because it's sort of as if you've taken so much that, yeah, you are taken out of your sort of human level reality, but you've not taken enough saying like, we've done sort of 30 gram, 40 gram trip reports on the channel, where there is absolutely no semblance of um, the human reality even left in you. And this sort of had a parallel of the Salvia experience where he was sort of conscious that he did have a body in the human physical realm, but he was also stuck in this sort of like void type existence where he was quite literally nothingness. And he keeps repeating over and over again, sort of engineering himself from the ground up, which is <clears throat> one of the most interesting facets of trip reports that I've read, where sort of you get to this um, God consciousness like stage. Although, to be fair, in this one, he didn't really recognize himself as God, he just sort of recognized himself as nothingness, as being this just like infinite singularity particle, which I guess you could say is God, but um, he didn't recognize himself using the actual word God or source or whatever you want to call it. But 
it was akin to all those sort of 5MEO DMT experiences where people have genuinely said they're like the conscious of placing every single molecule on their own body and then they extrapolate that out to the entire universe and realize that oh shit me as infinity has genuinely designed the whole universe including the body that i'm currently uh limiting myself to and associating myself with because to experience being a human god or infinity or your higher self whatever you want to call it has to impose distinctions and limitations on itself in order for it to role play as being vivek or whatever your name is, or whatever anything is, even inanimate objects, because as we've uh, learned through fucking many Sarver experiences, it is genuinely possible to experience consciousness as a, a fucking can of kombucha that I just picked up. Bloody hell, I wonder what that's like. It must be quite cold, to be fair. But, um, yeah, there must be some appeal in doing it, or else uh, God wouldn't have done it. But I guess it's not even about the appeal, is it? It's more the fact that, like, since God is one, there is absolutely no boundary to it. It's absolutely not limit, limited at all. It's eternally limitless in every direction. Every point is its center because you couldn't have a... There couldn't be an edge to reality, could there? Because that would mean there would be a boundary. And if there's a boundary, that means everything isn't possible. Well, going on some mad tangent here. Let's, let's, let's dial things back a little and uh, read through some of the responses on the Reddit post. So this is one that caught my attention. Sin, Lord of Gwinda, nice, nice little Dark Souls reference, mate, uh, says, this is probably the best high dose trip report I've ever read. Thank you so much for sharing. What are your beliefs on death after this experience? Do you regret diving into such a high dose? I've always wanted to work my way up to something like this, but I'm scared to death of becoming one of those stories about a normal guy who took too much and triggered a lifelong psychosis. But I appreciate being able to read your story. So MCFOT, the OP, writes, thanks for taking the time to read it, I'm flattered by all of the positive feedback. In regards to the idea of dying after this experience, I guess I'm just comfortable with it. I don't spend much time thinking about it, I'm a pretty positive person as is, but I just feel like I'll be prepared. I don't regret it, at the time I had no idea what I was even in for. It's kind of like the first time you throw up from drinking or green out from smoking too much weed. Sure, I had heard of intense trips. But I had no idea what I was in for until it was too late and was along for the ride. I know some people have had bad trips and they will never try psychedelics again. So I wouldn't recommend anyone trying until they are really ready. Which is an interesting question. How do you know if you're ready? For me, since I'm a pretty happy low stress person, I didn't think I could trigger a bad trip. If you are nervous about it, maybe do a few low doses and dive deep into your own head and think about anything in, that, in your life you are unsure or uncomfortable with. Thanks again for reading. I'm glad you enjoyed it. So that's really interesting to me because, yeah, a lot of, um, say, happy-go-lucky people or people who perceive themselves as being happy will think, oh, I, have, I can just go into this trip and it'll just be completely 100% positive because I'm saying that in quotations because positive really is a relative notion because... Even though this guy went through, say, what, the human egoic mind, or just any sort of finite being would perceive as being negative or hellish, going through like this eternal cycle of rebirth and being a black void and nothingness and hearing all these weird, strange voices. Um, yeah, to the finite mind, they would perceive that as being bad or painful, uncomfortable. But within the grand scheme of the, the trip, the narrative, the meta-narrative of the trip, these negative elements are actually intertwined with the the positive revelations that one receives so i've said this many many times you probably mate you're probably so sick of hearing me going over this if you if you're a, if you're an avid commentary listener of, uh, on these trip reports that i say that you have to sort of go through the yin and yang level experience oftentimes not always but oftentimes for most people because we're so bogged down with trauma and we have so much sort of ego baggage that we have to work through the only way for you to be sort of blessed by God's love or infinite love is for it to basically terrify the absolute shit out of you because at the end of the day, that's the only real thing that can pierce the veil and wipe the ego away is to basically like freak it out so much that it implodes in a sense. There's obviously different flavors and spectrums to this experience and this is just one way it, it can happen. Um, it's not always that, That's not always the case. Uh, I know it's happened to me, but uh, there's other times where I've just literally just sort of it's completely just pierced the veil and my ego is just 
sort of dissolved gracefully but for most people that won't be the case even for people who say see themselves as being quite happy and uh, positive and stress-free but um it's all part of the parcel isn't it um even if even if you are just like some super hippie super enlightened geezer you're probably going to still have to have some challenging trips because i mean where would the where would the achievement be if there wasn't some challenge like I say, the analogy with sort of video games is like the, the best video games are the ones that challenge you, frustrate you, but you still love the frustration in a sense because you see that you're achieving something, you're growing, you're getting deeper because again, if life was just in pure god mode and we're fucking no clipping fruit walls, it'd be well boring, wouldn't it? There has to be some challenge, some fear, something to overcome for us to uh, really actualize our uh, our spiritual journey, if you want to put it like that. Another thing that stuck out to me in this report is where I talked about having this memory sort of f come to the surface of, of drowning, almost drowning when he was younger, which it seems like uh, he'd either forgotten about, suppressed in himself unconsciously or consciously, but yeah, at the end of the day, he's forgotten about it and it's obviously had a massive impact on his life <clears throat> in a sense because it was like his first skirt with death. So oftentimes things like that will come up in heavy psychedelic trips because this an, an element of sort of the extreme psychedelic headspace is working through trauma and facing it head-on in a physical in a physical sense like yeah say this guy literally had the sort of the physical sensations of of drowning and that is part and parcel of working through it it's almost like yeah you have to feel it embrace it accept it and let it go and that's actually why psychedelics are so effective because it just cuts straight through the bullshit and gets to the meat of it and allows you to work through whatever you've been suppressing or whatever part of yourself you didn't even know you suppressed or even existed. So yeah, that's why psychedelics are so are so groovy. And the final thing I'll talk about is uh, something that I've related to, the experience of sort of running towards the white light while there's all these voices just cheering you on like, come on, you, d you know you can do it, we're all here for you and all that. I had that when I was in Manchester and when I was running around um, obviously, I didn't. Uh, it didn't end up ending very well. Um, relatively, in the end, it was it ended amazingly over the next few years as I integrated it. But physically, for the fire night itself, it was it was not a good time. Uh, it was pretty horrible uh, and painful. But yeah, w once you break through the other side, uh, you oftentimes do sort of realise yourself. Ah, I'm just pure infinite bliss, etc. Um, but yeah, I was sort of on the cusp of that, and I heard all these voices sort of egging me on and. All my mates' voices, uh, very strange, and this guy sort of had a, a glimpse of that experience as well. Obviously, there's a, a, funnily enough in the last report I just featured the Salvia one. There was the uh, the, the stereotypical white light of um, which is synonymous with set, sort of near death experiences. It's really interesting that those parallels that there is between sort of yeah physical near death experiences of being in like an accident. And you're like, oh my god, I'm, I'm literally on the verge, and those psychedelic experiences where you're in the verge of death in like a metaphysical sense rather than a physical sense although the two overlap and basically sort of are the same thing in a sense uh probably just absolutely trying shit now me but yeah i need to make a video comparing them these two aspects of the uh white light experience that people have on near death um encounters and just psychedelic uh psychedelic binges um yeah so if you'd like to see that video, let me know, and if not, well, I'll probably do it anyway, so you better just deal with it.